Family movies brief here. Today, I am going to explain an American comedy film called Blank Check. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the opening scene, we are introduced to 11-year-old Preston Waters. He lives with his parents and two elder brothers who always trouble him. Recently, they have taken over a part of Preston's room to store a computer system for their small business. Preston's father, Fred, supports his older sons and urges the youngest one to compromise. Preston is mad because he always gets the short end of the stick. Later, he goes to an amusement park for his friend Butch's birthday party. Since his father only gave him $10 to have fun, he cannot join his friends on the roller coaster rides. Instead, he is stuck on the lame merry-go-round. The kids make fun of him for not having enough money. Preston's family is not poor, but his father is passionate about teaching his kids how to handle and save money. Hence, he has never had the best of anything. During breakfast the next morning, Preston's older brothers leave to go to a baseball game. He wants to join them, but he doesn't have money for the tickets. Fred explains to him that saving is important if he wants to have fun, but the kid argues that he cannot save when he doesn't earn. His mother hands him an envelope that is an early birthday present from his grandmother. Inside is a blank check, which Preston thinks is useless because it has no amount written on it. His father fills the check in with $11 because he thinks it's an appropriate amount to be gifted to a kid. When Preston whines about it being too little, Fred claims that with proper interest, the money can grow to a million dollars in no time. This movie was obviously made in the 90s. Preston checks the theory on the internet and finds out his $11 will take at least 300,000 years to grow into a million. After looking at that number, he accepts the fact that he will not be a millionaire anytime soon. Still, he wishes to have his own house and a lot of money by tomorrow and goes to sleep. Elsewhere, Quigley is a con artist who has just escaped from jail. On a rainy night, he goes to an abandoned building where he had hidden a million dollars prior to his imprisonment. He plans to use the money to buy a new identity for himself. However, since the bills are marked consecutively, the FBI can track them back to him easily. He thinks of a plan and goes to meet the president of a bank named Biderman, who also used to be his partner in the money laundering business. Quigley wants him to exchange randomly marked bills in turn for the serially marked million dollars that he has. This way, the FBI wouldn't be suspicious even if they find out about his purchases. Biderman is reluctant because he doesn't want to get into the laundering business again, but Quigley threatens to kill his family if he doesn't help him. <laughs> That'll do it. When Biderman obliges, he is told to hand the money to a man named Juice the next day. At the same time, Preston comes to the bank to cash in his $11 and open a bank account. He is received by a beautiful bank teller, Shay. She gently tells him that he needs to have a minimum deposit of $200. Preston promises to come back in when he earns that much and leaves. Outside, his friend Butch snatches the check and runs away. While trying to catch him, Preston ends up behind Quigley's car and his bicycle is crushed by it. Quigley is bound to pay for the bike, but before he can write an amount on the check, he sees a police car nearby. He hands the kid the blank check and drives away immediately. Upon reaching home, Fred scolds Preston because of his broken bicycle. He gets grounded for a week, but doesn't tell his parents about the accident or the blank check. At night, he amounts the check to a million dollars and writes a random name on it. The very next day, he goes to the bank to cash it. However, the bank teller thinks that he is joking and brings him to President Biderman. Since the check has Quigley's signature on it, Biderman thinks that the kid is Juice, the middleman between him and Quigley. Preston thinks the idea is stupid and is about to walk away, but Biderman stops him. To the kid's surprise, he brings out bundles of money from the safe and fills his bag with them. While running away with the money, Preston bumps into the real juice, but the man thinks he's just a random kid and lets him get away. He meets Biderman and introduces himself as Quigley's henchman. Biderman quickly realizes his blunder and runs outside to look for Preston, but by then, he is long gone. Since the money is illegal, they cannot ask the police for help. As soon as Preston reaches home, he looks for houses on sale in his neighborhood. He finds the one he is looking for and calls the realtor. Following that, he talks to her using the computer's robotic voice and buys the house for $300,000. Yep, definitely the 90s. 
When asked about his name, Preston looks at the computer and says, Macintosh. He is overjoyed to have finally gotten everything that he wants in life. When Quigley finds out that his money is missing, he fumes in anger. At first, he insists that it was Biderman's fault, but then he remembers the blank check he gave to the kid with the broken bicycle. The three of them decide to visit the general places where kids go to find the one who stole their money. In the meantime, Preston buys a limo for himself and asks the driver to pick him up from his house. He sneaks out through the window and meets the driver, Henry. Initially, Henry believes the kid is trying to play a prank on him, but upon being handed the money, he apologizes and sits him in the vehicle. Preston says that the car belongs to Macintosh, a millionaire businessman. He claims to be an employee who works for Macintosh so that no one will doubt his story. Henry doesn't question him and takes him to every mall in town at his request. They buy clothes, TVs, toys, video games, and many more things to fill his new house. Preston also buys a bucket full of ice cream, something his parents would never allow him to do. He even gives Henry an expensive watch as a present for accompanying him to the malls. While returning home that night, he bumps into the bank teller, Shay. She remembers him as the $200 kid. Preston says that he has earned some money and is soon coming to meet her at the bank. Preston's gonna be pimping in no time. After they go their separate ways, we see Shay secretly meeting a man and telling him everything about her workplace. It is revealed that she is a secret FBI agent who is on a mission to catch the money launderers working in the bank. The next morning, Fred is about to drive to work, but their driveway is blocked by several vehicles transferring toys, furniture, and TVs into another house in the neighborhood. He goes to check what the fuss is all about and finds his youngest son ordering people around. When Fred asks him what is going on, he says that he has started to work for Macintosh, their new neighbor who is moving in today. Fred doesn't want his son to work for a stranger, but Preston convinces him that Macintosh is a good man. He even orders the workers to clear the path for his father's car. Fred is stunned to see the kind of authority Preston has over them. When the house is finally done, it has a racetrack, several balloon houses, a built-in video game system, Preston's personal office, and a swimming pool with a slide that connects to the office. Meanwhile, Quigley, Biderman, and Juice go around amusement parks looking for the kid. Their only clue is a blurry picture taken by the surveillance camera in the bank. The word about a wealthy man moving into the neighborhood goes around, and even Shay hears about Macintosh. Because of his unconditional wealth and the way he spends it, she suspects him to be part of a criminal organization. One day, she goes to meet him in the house and finds Preston instead. When asked about Macintosh, Preston says he is in a meeting and is on a tight schedule for the next month or so. Shay is about to leave when Preston asks her out on a professional date. She hesitates initially but agrees to go when he lies about being Macintosh's financial manager. Later, he asks the driver Henry for advice since Henry has dated more women than him. According to Henry, women like chiseled men with money. They prepare for the date by exercising daily. With time, Henry becomes his best friend as they play, eat, and have fun together. Preston's family still thinks he's working for Macintosh. Still, Fred doesn't allow him to go out on a date at night. Preston slyly whispers that he was about to show Fred's work proposal to Macintosh. Sensing that his son's relationship with a millionaire might help him, Fred lets Preston do anything he wants. At night, he and Shay go to a fancy restaurant for dinner. He gives her a necklace as a present, but claims that it is from Macintosh. Similarly, he also asks her questions about her dating preferences, while insisting he was told by Macintosh to ask them. Later, they go to a water fountain and play. However, the fun ends when Quigley and his group bump into them. Preston asks Shay to race him to the limo and drives away before they can catch him. Before separating, he invites her to his and Macintosh's birthday party on the weekend. Upon finding out that Macintosh will be present at the party, Shay agrees to come. The next day, Preston hires a party planner who charges him a $10,000 deposit. She wants to plan a fancy dinner and make a lot of profit by ripping him off. Later, Henry goes out with his friends and Preston is left all alone in the house. With nothing to do, he goes to the park to reminisce about his old life. At the same time, Quigley and his group also arrive at the park, looking for him. They spot him, but Preston cycles away immediately. A chase ensues between them, but the trio has to stop when their car crashes on top of another car. Biderman comments that stealing another million dollars would be easier than chasing this kid. 
Just when they're about to give up, they hit the jackpot and find Preston's friend, Butch. They hold him on the edge of the roof of a building and make him reveal Preston's name and address. That night is also the night of the birthday party. As all the preparations take place in the mansion, Preston's brothers call Shay a gold digger, convinced that she is hanging out with him for Macintosh's money. Shay may be a gold digger, but Preston is a miner. This upsets Preston, and he asks Henry for his expert advice. He also affirms that some people are only nice to him because of his money. They finally go to the party, but Preston isn't allowed to touch his own present because the security guard is waiting for Macintosh to open them. He also finds the food awful because he was expecting to get pizza and ice cream. Somewhere else, Shay and her team have found out that Macintosh has no past records, which means he is a criminal trying to create a new identity. They plan to catch the man and arrest him tonight. The party planner gives Preston a bill of $100,000. When he returns to his office to check his account, he realizes that he has spent all of his million dollars in only six days. Now he only has a little over $300 left. He goes outside and tells the planner that Macintosh is missing, which means she will not get paid. The woman creates a scene and asks everyone to go home because the party is over. Soon, everyone takes their presents and returns home. When Preston is alone in the living room, Quigley and his team arrive at the house, asking him for his money. A scared Preston tells them the truth, but the adults refuse to believe he spent all million dollars in less than a week. Biderman suggests Quigley steal Macintosh's identity, since he is non-existent anyway. They like the idea, but the only problem is Preston, who might reveal the truth to anybody. Hearing this, Preston runs outside and is followed by the three. They get into a chase in the house, but since Preston knows every corner of it, he outsmarts them. The childish addition to the house, like the slide through his office and the built-in video game system, comes in handy. Still, in the end, Quigley manages to catch him. Right then, the FBI surrounds the house and asks them to leave the kid alone. They arrest all three of them for fraud, money laundering, and theft. Quigley is assumed to be Macintosh. Hence, Preston is let free without interrogation. The kid finds out Shay is an FBI agent and is sad that she cannot be his girlfriend. Shay kisses him and asks him to meet her in 10 years. Grooming kids was cool in the 90s. On walking outside, Preston meets Henry, who had gone to get ice cream. Since they cannot work together again, they wish each other farewell. In the last scene, Preston walks home with his father to see that his family has made a surprise birthday cake for him. When asked to make a wish, he realizes that he already has everything he wants in life, his family. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.